A lot of work going on. As soon as we finish it, we are out of here. Welcome back to McGough Shop. Jim McCleary, Most Awarded Certified Club Maker, Club Fitter, where we talk about club reviews, club repairs, and club fittings. If you would like, subscribe, swing, and hit that bell, and that way you get more of these videos when they drop. So, where are we out of here to? We're going to Golf Works, all right? Golf Works. My major supplier, my major trainer. I mean, just about everything that you can say major in golf, that's happening. So, Let's talk a little bit about Golf Works, right? Uh, Ralph Maltby, not Roger Maltby, founded Golf Works and did it in the 70s, okay? Mr. Maltby is an engineer by trade, a mechanical engineer by trade to be, to be more exact, and had a love of golf, left Spalding, started his own company, and the rest is history. He's, you know, he's published a few books. He's obviously the author of a lot of things that are going on, and people are carrying on his tradition, you know, at the golf works. Now I've gone out there and I've been, you know, I've did my initial training with them, did some masters training with them. And every time I go up to visit with those guys, I learn a little something new. Welcome, welcome to the Golf Works Club Making Academy. If you look here, there is four monster benches four vices on each bench and all kinds of tools for you the want to want to know what's going on on everything you need to know club making this is where i took my club making masters class all right sat around here with guys in the that are some are not with us any longer some are just getting out of the industry and taught me quite a bit while we were going through the class it was just amazing so you 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 know Go to the Golf Works website, go down to the services, and it talks about the schools. There are several different schools for which you can choose from, several different dates, okay? And two different rooms, all the tools you're ever, ever going to want to know how to use, very up-to-date stuff. And Jim is one of, well, not one of, the best that's in the industry that's giving these types of instructions. All right, you can do that. And I'm an hour and 45 minutes away. If you ever want to come visit when you're done here or before here or before come up here, just give me a call and we'll arrange a time frame. But here it is. This is where you want to go. Because this is just the big room. When we go that way, there's some places that you can test your wares when you go to make it because there's an indoor fitting bay. And then everybody gets to stand around you and see if your head flies off or not. And, that, and then, then you're in for a ribbon if that happens. All right. So that, pay attention. And, and hopefully this is the beginning of many, many things because I wanted to bring, you know, isolate different characteristics of a golf shaft. The first one is flex, right? Everybody wants to know what flex is. Right? And they're, depending on your tool that you have in order to monitor or measure flex is how you would describe what flex is. So Golf Works being the source of a lot of different things, they have all their equipment, they have the golf mechanic equipment, they teach this stuff, they have an advanced shaft uh, school, all right, advanced shaft technology school. And so we're going to take a trip and we're going to go up there and we're going to talk about uh, what flex is, how it's monitored and some profiles that go with it. So let's go for about an hour and 45 minutes and let's go talk to the guys at Golf Works. We've left the McGolf shop and now we're back into the, or back into, we're visiting the Golf Works Club Making Academy. And we're, you know, the whole premise of this was to show you how we measure flex, right? How we measure flex. And in the day when we first started, it was all about deflection, right? It was all about deflection. And what you're going to see, I'm going to pop up one of the originals. And basically what it was, was the backing was made out of wood. Right, and the materials were just a little different, and that's just you know the times are getting better. Well, now the, you know it comes with a warning: don't deflect anything that's under 75 grams in graphite. And why do you think that is? Well, it's because of that. Right? We talked about that. There's a four gra there's a four pound top. There's a three pound bottom. Seven pounds. Seven pounds hanging off of this guy. So you put it right here. You let it deflect, 
Okay? And then what you'd do is you'd run your run a pen, or you'd have you could either have some if you just wanted to look, this graph would be fine. If you were doing something in the way of profiling and you want it for a particular set, you would put a piece of graph paper up there and you say this one and down at the end this would be a four. The next one this would be a five, this would be a six, and you'd have all these profiles so that you could show somebody how you did it and you'd have record of that. And if you look here, you know, we're, we're hitting into the orange, so whatever the orange would be. That, and, and so that gives you a record of deflection, okay? Now this takes us, when you do deflection, it also talks about profile. You know, why would some deflect more than others? Is it just because of the weight here or is it because of the profile of the shaft? Those are two things that we got to kind of separate but talk together about, okay, if you know what I mean. So this is the deflection board, still very relevant. If you talk to other club makers that are very serious about knowing the profile, knowing, the, knowing how to make a frequency or a matched set would be better, is a whole deflection criteria, and we're going to show you that a little bit later. So here is the deflection board. Now let's see how we go do it digitally. We went from the deflection board, now we're into the digital looking. Now, two different concepts, right? We're hanging a weight, we're seeing deflection. Now, this is a digital deflection of a sort, but uh, a different holder, right? We ha this one is the new model. When you see me in my shop, I have the old man variety, which is easily 20 years old. Close. Yeah, yeah. Easily, easily 20 years old. And, you know, they've done their improvements for the way that it hits, so if people want to do their, the way that they will twang it, okay? Now, a couple cases in point to what I like telling people is, when you have these jaws right here, you twang in the direction of the clamp, okay? You'll see that when people want to do flowing and all that stuff. Now, it's relatively, you know, easy to figure that part out. However, I've seen guys that'll come in here and they try and throw it sideways and it pulls it out of the clamp and they wonder why. Don't do that. All right, so we turn, you, you get it in here, clutch clamp, always another thing, so you always get it down, you tighten it the same way. I like two clicks, that's what I do. Get it turned on, it resets itself, it's ready. Now there's two modes. So it does the three and the five just like mine does. I like the, we'll just do the simplified one. And then we have, we align the laser, which actually it's pretty good right there, right? You come along here, just let it bounce. It reads it, gives you a number. Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna bring in the guy who taught me. All right, this has been, we're going on 20 years, 20 years, and he taught me, Jim, look, Jim and Jim again. It, it, Jim in the, in the club maker industry, it must be a thing. All right, so when you look at it, and we told you, I showed you on mine, it's a length versus frequency, and then the lines of flex have been, or where you imagine it. Well, Jim, Britt, and the guys at Golf Works have come up with a new chart. A new chart. Now this is an ungrip chart, and we put a grip club in here. Right. So that that would go to our old, to our existing chart. Right. So and you guys now, every time I do one of these videos, one of you guys always asks me, where do I get what you know what chart am I working to? Well, mine's calibrated to mine. That's from back in a different day. These guys have a, a chart that should work for just about everybody. So get a hold of these guys and ask them about this particular chart, and then this one is for? This one is ungripped, and what we did different with this one is, if you'll see on the old original chart, there was a line that told you this is R-Flex. Well, there is no one slope that'll fit every R-Flex shaft that's ever made, so we made ranges, and we took this based off of all the shaft profiling data that we've created and compiled, and. Britt, Lindsay, and myself, we worked on this for about six months before we finally said, okay, we're comfortable enough that we can use this one. We use it in all our advanced shaft technologies here, schools are here at Golf Works, uh, and it works well. There are still some shafts that'll go outside the regular range or, or the stiff range, and, and it's, it's just kind of a nature of the beast type of thing and how the manufacturers design them and treat the flex, so be aware of that. But this one is based on 
having ungripped, which is the correct way to test the frequency of a, of a club or a shaft. That's a fact. And when we, especially obviously when you're building, that's what you want to do. Now, what we've done in the past is we've put on tons of different grips onto one particular club, and we've seen what deflections, differences it will give us, and we kind of use that as the as the absorber. So it's a modifier. So this normally, this normally I need to add, right? We add, I don't know, it used to be between 15 and 25 now, depending on the size of the grip, to the number that you get so that you can be on either this guy or even this guy right here. So as we've been talking, you know, have you ever been, you ever pull out a, what, pull out an iron or a driver and it says S on it and you're just like, wow, I can't control it. And then you go to another guy and you say, well, let me see your S-Flex. And it's a different manufacturer and you just go, wow, this thing's performing totally different. There you are. That's what these guys here have been doing. Now, this one is just for irons. Okay, this one is just for irons. They've got a whole nother one that's built on wood shafts. Okay, wood shafts. So, you know, we've been showing you so the real question, you know, the whole idea here is we're talking about measuring flex. What do you tell, now Jim here teaches, he's been, well, he's been teaching for quite some time, and he, he's probably heard every question on their son, but when we talk about flex, what do you tell him flex actually is? Well, flex to me is, is more of a bend profile, and, and one of the things that we're cautious to tell them with the frequency machine is it doesn't totally really measure flex. It's measuring the flex of that five inches of the clamp. So when we shaft profile test, if we profile in a frequency machine, we move down through the shaft at different dimensions to then we can compare that data to a different shaft, uh, that type of things. Uh, you know, flex is feel, you know, and one of the ways Dr. Braley taught me frequency matching back in 1982, I worked for Cobra. And Doc would pick up a club and he'd waggle it and he says, you get a feel of it, you put it in the machine, you put a number on feel. And, and that's still one of the best ways to, to, you know, to me to explain flex. It's a feel type of thing. And that comes in with a fitting process too because Jim's feel, my feel, Britt's feel, your feel are different. It could be grip pressure, it could be the, the, the rate at which you do this, it could be what, you're just, what you might visually see that transmits into your hands. It's a lot of different things that you get that. And you know, not the old MOI stuff, but you know, that could be right in that particular zone, mm -hmm. right? And when we're, when we look at MOI, which again, will be something else. All right, so, and so there's flex, right? And that's what we want to talk to you about. And now there, now we're going to head down and we're going to go talk about more, uh, more of the other machines that monitor flex is particularly if we're talking about bin profiles. All right, we're talking about flex, and we, we met, got into the mentioning of profiles. And, you know, some of the reason why the profiles are different is because, you know, the shapes of the shafts have changed, you know. And if you look, here's an original profile of a shaft. And if you happen to know some grain wood, that's because it was. It's a wood shaft, all right. And... Did we? Did you guys ever profile this? I've never profiled it. I've weighted it. weighs 185 grams. 185 grams, and these guys are swinging that stuff around as no, like nobody's business. All right, uh, this. I don't know if we're taking you through the years in the correct sequence, but it used to. Now here's. You ever heard of the oversized butt? This was a .865 butt. All right. 0.865 butt, meaning that guy right there was over three quarters of an inch round, or this this diameter. And if you ever remember, if you guys are old enough, they had to have special grips put on them, or you had to use the thinner grips to go put on top of them in order for them to fit, and then they just looked really bad. <laughs> but they got on there. And this, so what did the what did the big what was the idea of the big butt? Well, the idea of the big butt, part of it was the fact that it did use a much lighter grip, and it moved the balance point of the club much closer to the head. Uh, back in the day when TaylorMade did the bubble, now the bubble wasn't quite as extreme, it wasn't quite as big a butt diameter, but it was bigger, 
they used to have a fixture, they would hang their driver that had the bubble shaft in it, and they would hang a competitor's driver. And they would pull these drivers and put them in motion, well the one with the bubble shaft, because it had a lower bounce point, would swing faster on its own. Uh, one of the downsides of both of these shafts was you didn't have much grip choice. You know, there was a grip that pretty much fitted and that was about it. Now, now the TaylorMade, and this is a cutaway of a bubble, TaylorMade uses a balloon technology so that the walls, even where the bubble were, they didn't change thickness. Other companies like this uh, SK Fiber shaft here, uh, the walls you know, the walls would have been thicker where the bubble was. The same thing in some of the uh, uh, a distance master bubble shaft that we manufactured here at Golf Works. The walls would have been thicker there, and when you make it bigger in diameter and make the walls thicker, it's going to make it stiffer there, so you have to make it more flexible, in this case towards the tip end of the shaft. A lot of these bubble type shafts also, and big bud shafts, had higher torque ratings because the material was played very stiff because of the size and the way to keep some feel was to, was to increase the torque. And then if you notice on the newer on the newer versions, this one actually has two bubbles on it. And the, but the, the butt sections got back to normal size on the last two that I've showed you. Yeah, so in That's this case different. they were trying to make it bend more a little bit between those two bubbles. Kind, of, then, a, kind of a mid-high bend point. All right, and then what are we seeing with these two guys? Well, this one, the, the shiny silver one was mostly just a finish. That was a shaft uh, that we used to manufacture here at Golf Works. And it was kind of a, you know, a, a finish. There's, uh, with some of the UST recoil shafts in re mm -hmm. recent years, have had that same type of finish, so it was more of a look. Uh, when you got into the Pro Force Gold, uh, obviously it was a very, very popular shaft back in the day. Um, a little stiffer tip shaft. This was an 85 gram version. Uh, designed more to kind of create a ball, a little lower ball flight. I called a lot of these shafts the Pro Force Gold, the original Pro Light 35 from Graphaloy. I called them second generation 60 gram shafts because they flighted the ball down more where most of the first generation ones played more flexible and hit the ball higher. And we see a lot of the same thing today now with 50 gram shafts. They're more still first generation that's going to flight the ball a little higher, maybe play a little more flexible than normal. Now, if, if this was one of the originals, when they did this back in the day, some of the weight was based on the layers of paint, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. These, these things had like some outrageous, like seven or eight layers of paint, and not all yellow. Right. If you, when we would sand through this, there would be layers of like pink and white and, and right. yellow and all kinds of stuff, and that added to the weight. I don't know if it added to the rigidity of it, but yeah. it if, would. if the shaft said in this case 85 grams, then that was 85 grams before it was painted. Um, this is one of the original biomatrixes, not the one that you'd be more familiar with that you'd see in Bubba Watson's driver. This one was actually made for Adams, and it actually has a 400 tip diameter on the on the steel tip, so it's a much bigger tip that they for some clubs that they were doing at the time. Um, this shaft. Well, it became popular because Mark Kalkovecchio was winning a PGA Tour event and in an interview after his round on Saturday said, I put this new by Matrix in my driver and I'm just absolutely driving it outstanding. Uh, the phone rang off the wall Monday morning and everybody wanted them and it didn't exist yet. It, uh, it played a little stiffer than normal. You had to be careful with that, but for stronger players it was very good. Uh, this shaft is called a bend shaft and yeah. it's done by a gentleman up in upstate New York named Ben Papa, and he actually did his version of, if you will, a bi-matrix uh, long before True Temper ever did. Um, and he had been doing them, but being a very, very small vendor and um, not all the advertising budget that True Temper had, he never had quite the success with his um, that True Temper did. Okay. And of course now we're seeing it in the, in the putter shaft. Yeah, oh yeah, the, the new one. So again, you know, different shapes create different profiles. And, and now with the way technology moves forward, you know, the laying of the flags and the way prepeg is made and the materials, you can change the torque values and the curves and the way that it bends. And that's where the fitter and the builder or the fitter builder, they, they have to know that, 
right? They have to know that. So you don't go, well, yeah, this was a stiff flex, so here you go, and this, no, that's not how that works, all right? You go through the fitting process, figure out what works for your swing style, right? And it, it's speed, torque, transition, release, all those different things. And then we find the profiles that marry up. And, you know, there were guys in the day that the bubble shaft fit wonderfully for. There was guys that they did not, right? There was guys that the matrix shaft was just an absolute work of art. And there's guys that you couldn't get near it, all right? So that's, that, therein lies where we're talking about profiles and how they relate to the flex. The last bit of it, guys, where, you know, we've talked about, the, we've talked about deflection we've, and how that was used. We've talked about frequency and the digital concept and how that's been done. We've been talking about profiles and how that gets done. Now, if you really, you know, other than the wobbling like Jim was talking about before, now we've got ways to monitor the profile for guys who are really wanting to know each and every type of shaft. And in order for fitting and for research, both, right? right? So, Jim, I'm not strong with the force on this stuff. This is Jim. This is Jim's area right here. So we're gonna let him go and tell us how he does this. All right. Let's see how we do it. What are we using right. this for? Well, the first machine in the front here is just actually a torque tester for testing shaft torque, uh, which by definition is just its measurement of resistance to twisting. Uh, this machine we clamp at the butt end, clamp the tip of the shaft. It's got a six inch arm, uses a two pound weight um, to measure the torque and it'll test it on either side because the shaft has to torque basically the same in either direction or it's non-conforming to the rules of golf. Um, I don't know what the tolerance the USGA uses, to be honest with you, but there would be one. The machine in the background here, this is there's a newer version now. This is an older one that I still use. This is a shaft profiling machine. Um, it's also a very good spine finding tool if you're just trying to find a spine or that, you know, uh, part of the shaft. Uh, we use it for that as well. But when I do it for profile testing, I'll slide this down to about a five inch mark down here. Uh, I put the shafts in here. Uh, I set a load. I have a way of setting the load on this uh, on this uh, pressure gauge. Um, I, there's different readings. I tend to use the one in grams. That's the one that comes up first. And shaft manufacturers might profile in half inch increments, quarter inch increments, all the way down to shafts, and it creates what we call an EI curve, which is an inertia curve. I only do about every three or four inches. Um, just from a time standpoint of view of what I, you know, of when I do it, uh, to get a profile, I then put those numbers for each each zone that I test into a spreadsheet on an Excel spreadsheet, turn it into a line graph, and, and have these EI curves, and so I can take one shaft EI curve and compare it to another, you know, shaft EI curve. Uh, we also do profile testing with the frequency machine because that's how we started uh, in doing it in the different zones as well. Um, I would tend to tell you personally I like this a little better. Uh, I always like putting a load on a shaft to, to see how it's going to perform as opposed to just an oscillation. So the, you know, he's talking about Jim is in the unique position that uh, Golf Works is by far one of the largest, if not the largest, distributor of most of the golf shafts that you're going to see. And he gets to be able to bring these models down here, see how they work, and then we create these graphs. Now, I'm at the end of that pipeline. He creates these graphs, I take a look at them, and I know what he's doing with that graph, and then I know how it will perform for a particular type of golf or particular type of swing, right? And, and that's what this would give you. Now, it, it, you know, if I was wanting to get more into the, the research or more, get very, really, really detailed into that, this would be that particular tool. So if you're looking for that, and you really, that's your thing, is you want to know more about the, each individual type of profile, you can spend either days, hours or minutes on this thing in order to get the information that you might need. And you saw where I've shown you on the on how to make a spine finder tool, right? We'll put it up in here as another video. But that's what he's talking about is right here. You set it in here and it'll it'll turn and it'll find the center and you can make your line and you can and then you can do your spine finding there. But just some more audible. So there's just you know like everything in golf the the most the best answer you can get in golf is it depends, right? It just, it depends because it depends. Do you like using, 
Do you like using bin profiling? Do you like using the deflection board? Do you like using digital product? Do you knowing in adding other things in there? Do you like uh, how you do torque, right? Just in case in point, he's using a six inch arm with a two pound weight. Other guys will use a one foot arm with a one pound weight. It's the same thing, right? Because you're, it's, it comes out in foot pounds, right? So how do you, how do you make that do with the foot pounds? So again, it depends, right? But this is how we're looking at flex. You guys are, we're talking about how we've seen it, what we think it is, and some of the tools we can do that. So for just this particular part of the shaft, we're at Golf Works with Jim Y, the best instructor that I know. <clears throat> All right, thanks to the guys at Golf Works yet again. I, I always learn a ton when I go up there. Uh, Jim Y, Jim Yaninich, right? Uh, dude, get healed up. All right. So for those who don't know, Jim had some uh, ankle surgery, and it's taken a while to heal up. And uh, hopefully, just you know, Godspeed to make sure that that gets better. Thanks to Britt, Lindsay. Britt's always been a friend of the club maker as far as I've ever known him, and it's been ten, tens of years. And again, thank you very much, Pete Calloway. Thank you for that plate, dude. That thing is awesome. It's been a it's been a deal. Pete is really kind of the design. He's kind of the mastermind for these new changes that you're seeing in the in the equipment that's coming from, I mean, golf equipment that's coming from the Golf Works. If you guys are in a mode to try and build something, certainly give them a give them a call and uh, see. If you guys are interested in anything that like you know in the club making world, they're basically it as far as schooling goes, right? And you know you get that schooling. It's a Sometimes it's a two-day, three-day, five-day, whatever it is. And if you have the time, you can drive down the hour and 40 minutes and come see me and we'll visit for a bit. And again, always, thank you guys at Golf Works for that information. Hopefully we can keep this going. Put it down in the show notes, tell me what you think, and let's see your scores go low.